Hey guys, today we're talking about Thermax PPS or polyphenylene sulfide. Now this is widely used in the most demanding applications because it has extreme chemical resistance coupled with superior mechanical and thermal properties. Now PPS is a high performance polymer that exhibits exceptional chemical resistance and it's widely known as one of the most chemically resistant thermoplastics materials available in the world known to man. Specifically, because it's insoluble in any known solvent under 200 Celsius. Yeah, this stuff is crazy. So PPS is used in automotive, chemical processing, oil and gas industries, and electronics, and it's inherently flame retardant and self-extinguishing, making it an ideal material for electronics and electrical applications. Here's the box and the spool inside when you order it off our store at visualminer.com slash materials. And of course, remember, we've got a rewards program. So everything you buy, you get points that'll go towards filament, nozzles, adhesive, and anything else you could need. So do keep in mind that even if it comes when it's not fully sealed, you will need to dry this before you print it, even fresh out of the box, no matter what. You never know how long it's been sitting in the warehouse before it actually got bagged up. So more on that in just a minute. So definitely check that out, visionminer.com slash materials. Now, what kind of machine do you need to print this filament? First off, your nozzle is going to need to go up to at least 315 Celsius, preferably up to 345 or higher. Uh, your bed temperature, minimum 120 Celsius. We usually do it around 160. And for adhesive, our nanopolymer adhesive works fantastic, keeps it stuck to the bed very, very well, whether that be carbon fiber or glass or PEI. And for a chamber temperature, you definitely want anywhere from 60 to 90 Celsius. It helps keep that warping down. As far as support material goes, you can use the Thermax high temp support, which we have in our store uh, specifically for this. And you've also got Oxysys 180, which is a great option if you want soluble supports. It really makes a huge difference. Now, as far as annealing goes with PPS, you do want to anneal it as after you print it, if you want to ramp up the crystallinity in the resin, it's going to maximize the chemical thermal and chemical resistance properties. Generally, annealing takes about two to four hours of heating at around 130 Celsius. And as far as drying goes, yes, you absolutely must dry this filament before you print it. It absorbs just enough moisture to give you problems when you're squeezing it through a tiny little nozzle at high temps. Now, we do offer a full drying kit on our website, including the vacuum chamber at visionminer.com slash dry kit. It's the best way we find out to get all that moisture out so your prints don't look crappy and weak. We are here to make it easy. And by the way, if you're liking these videos, hit that like and subscribe. It really lets us know that you're enjoying this content. Let us know in the comments down below what you want to see next, what type of tests. We're starting a whole new series very, very soon. And if there's something valuable to you that would give you a perspective you haven't seen anywhere else, we would love to do it. Now let's talk about some basic material specifications. It's got a melting temperature of 285C with a glass transition of 85C. A little bit weird, semi-crystalline, they do that. Now it's got really insane chemical resistance. Again, it's insoluble to any solvent known to man under 200 Celsius. And it's got inherent flame resistance and self-extinguishing properties. It's also got long-term hydrolytic stability, meaning you can use it underwater and it's got really low moisture absorption and it's got exceptional strength and modulus even at elevated temperatures. It's also got a stable dielectric constant and dissipation factor of a wide range of temperatures and frequencies. So real quick, let's check out some example parts. Of course, today we have the obligatory Benchy model. This actually turned out fantastic. If you don't know what the Benchy is, it's actually an engineering part designed to stress test 3D printers. So while it looks like a little toy, there's actually features in here and measurements that really uh, make it an engineering piece to tune in your printer and really send a material through the races and see you know, how do overhangs look, how do fine features look, is it dimensionally accurate, does it expand in different ways. Cool little part, turned out really, really nice and impressive. Next, we've got a little vase made in PPS. Yeah, it's a pretty little vase, very nice little thing, just basic. Nice surface finish, comes out very smooth. Uh, by the way, we do have the same sample bars in PPS, so if you want one of these, we've got them available on the site. Uh, give us a call about your application. We'll send you a few of these uh, for you to test out if you need it. And yeah, these, are, these turned out beautiful. You really get fine details with this material. It is a little bit different when you're printing it, I've noticed. Like the way it flows is a bit unique compared to most other filaments. Usually I like up upping the extrusion multiplier a tad bit. 
Um, but these were all printed on the FunMed HT, so a, you know, the baseline of the high champ 3D printing world uh, handles this stuff like a breeze. Next here we've got <clears throat> some tubes. Now these are just thin tubes printed with a 0.4 nozzle at 0.4 extrusion width. And really, I mean, it's cool because you can see, you know, how much it bends. You can see, oop, and then it explodes in your hand. <laughs> but really what I want to show you is on this part here, you can see the difference in printing temperatures and how it affects the surface quality. Up here at the top, it was a different temperature and we switched it halfway through just to see what would happen. And you get a little bit more of a sheen on the bottom. That's something with a lot of plastics you can actually do. Printing at different temperatures, like even five or 10 degrees, will, can give you a different surface finish. It's pretty interesting. Uh, moving right along, we've got the electronics enclosure, which we did in every other material. So go check out those other videos and we'll have a full comparison video coming out soon to show all the differences between these. But as you can see, it knocked out details pretty darn well. A little bit of tuning required in there. And it sticks to the bed pretty well. It does like to warp a lot, but with our nanopolymer adhesive, it does a great job at those high temperatures, keeping it down stuck to the bed. Ridiculously complex parts that I can't talk about in this material that were just, I mean, just think of a three-dimensional maze pattern for electronics and it actually worked pretty well. It actually worked really well. And that was before, that was about two years ago before we had the soluble supports. So we had to use breakaway supports and pull everything out. It still worked pretty good. So if you don't have a dual extruder, you can still get pretty good results. As you can see here, there was support under this area and the bridging did pretty darn well. Technically not full bridging because we had supports. But here on the undersurface, you can also see it looks, you can see the texture and the pattern of the layer lines, but there's no drooping. It supported it up very well without you know, major drooping like you might see on peak or something like that. Very cool. All right, here we got a jig fixture type deal for manufacturing. As you can see at the top here, we had a little more tuning to do, but we just uh, wanted to get this out. And really this one is nice. You can see this area, very smooth, very good features with diagonals and everything else like that. And these were all printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height. So it, it's, it's interesting, the surface finish actually kind of hides the layers. It's smoother than you would expect from something like ABS or polycarbonate. It just has a different surface finish. And of course, here we have the beautiful vases, the vases. So you can see a nice surface finish in this thing here. We've got two of these puppies. Yep, very nice, nice and smooth. All right, let's move right along into the breaking and burning section of the video. I'm gonna get my uh, safety first glasses here going on, pull out the handy dandy Babco vise, and uh, first thing I'm gonna do is take one of these bars and we're just gonna bend it in the vise and see how it reacts. So I'll stick it right down here, just right to the logo, like all the other tests. If you haven't checked out all the other material videos, definitely go check those out our YouTube channel and subscribe so you see them all as they come out as well. And so I'm just gonna bend this backwards and we're gonna see how it breaks, if it shatters, if it bends, if it goes back and forth a million times, see what happens. Ooh, all right. So it was kind of a thud. It wasn't a, su a, super, a super violent break. It just sort of broke. It just went <clears throat> as opposed to <clears throat> or not breaking at all and bending. Had a little bit of give. I'm gonna do another one. Let's do this one right here. See how this one reacts, just so we, so we know it's not a fluke. Oop, right there at the logo. And let's bend it back again. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Looks like we changed some settings here. Probably printed a little bit hotter, and now it's not breaking, it's, it's giving and it's now tearing apart from itself. There we go. All right, take that out of the vise. So pretty good impact strength by the fact that it didn't shatter and explode. Looks like the layer of fusion was not as good as expected on these prints, so we'll take that note down. I can tear this whole thing apart. Yep, those high temperature materials I'll tell you sometimes they're tricky. So keep in mind, these have not actually been annealed, so we'll be doing a little more experimentation. We got some chemical stuff coming up. We're gonna dip things in sulfuric acid and things of that nature, so definitely be on the 
look out for this material. Very, very good. Let's move right along into the breaking of the vase. I'm just going to stick my thumbs in here and we're going to see how much it deflects, if it pops back out, and then how it shatters, if it breaks along the lines or what happens. Here we go. Woo! Yeah! Oh, dude. All right. All right. We got a slinky. Almost a slinky. Not fully. So it broke a lot. The, the Z axis is definitely the weakest axis with this one. And it appears that it did go up and down between the layers a few times, but it's mostly Z axis. Now, if I take that, break that, bend this area, can twist it apart. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Now, the top here, if I take the very top and just squeeze. Now, what you'll notice is this whole vase was printed at the same speed, and up at the top here, that means that this is going around over the previous layer much faster than down here where it's not as much. So there's going to be more heat stuck in here as it's going back over that layer. So we expect a little bit better layer adhesion up the top. And as you can see, it doesn't break as much. You get a lot more deflection. Awesome. <laughs> oh, all right. There we go. We're just going to, we're just going to tear this thing apart. Very nice. All right. All right, good stuff. Okay, so moving right along into the burning section. For that, I'm going to whip out the Print Pro 2 here. It's a nice little office sized fume extractor for soldering or wood burning or anything with fumes that you don't want to stink up your office. Works great, really cool little unit. Going to go ahead and get the handy dandy lighter out. And then I'm going to light, I'm going to light, if I could break this, I'm going to light the end of it. <laughs> All right, maybe not that. Ah, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to start by lighting this really thin part on fire. Let me turn on the BOFA. I'm going to hold it up and see how the thin, tiny amount of material reacts to open flame. Here we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's on fire, and now it's not. That is self-extinguishing. That is excellent. That's one property we see from these performance materials that you don't get with most others, and that's that it won't just keep burning. <sighs> that's wonderful, man, I tell you. Let's do it again. It will actually self-extinguish and has low off-gassing. So it's on fire, it's on fire, and it's not on fire anymore. Very good. Yep. Very cool. Very nice. Didn't drip. It probably would have dripped if I take this and really go at it. Let's see if we can get it to drip or to melt. No. It's really not doing it. It's on fire. It's on fire. It's going to drip. There we go. Oh, God. Oh, geez. Yeah, let's really let's get those fumes. And it put itself out. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> We've had a lot closer calls with some of the other materials there where they do not put themselves out. So, very cool. Great feature of PPS is self-extinguishing. Now, let's light one of these on fire. It doesn't smell that great either. Actually, that actually is That's more pungent than most of the other ones. Most of the other ones smell like chemicals. That smells a little bit like organic matter. I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, let's see what happens to the letters when exposed to direct flame. Here we go. All right. The letters are burning a little bit, bubbling a little bit. All right. Not too much is happening. Let's check that out. All right, so they expanded a significant amount. You can still read them. They didn't, they didn't go away completely. The whole bar is not burned. Let's light the bar on fire, see what happens. All right, here we go. The bar is on fire. There we go. But like that, the thicker bar just immediately self-extinguishes. Let's see if we can get it going a little bit more. Once again, guys, don't try this at home. It's easy to hurt yourself. We got a lot of medical equipment here. 
just in case. No, just expands, does not, let's see if it's soft. It is soft. I can bend it over. Now this, like a lot of the other self-extinguishing filaments, you can see there in the middle, the carbon, the outer layer turned to carbon, flakes away and exposes the rest of the material on the inside. If I grab this, no, still too hard in the middle. So I'll do this one more time. Let's just. Man, <clears throat> that's good. Goes out quick. Very nice. Definitely something great for aerospace, defense, things like that. Electronics, if you don't want to. You don't want your electronics enclosure to burn. This is a great material to learn, to use. Very, very good. Plus that electrical insulating property is, is awesome. If there's any data we have missed, you can go to visionminer.com slash data for all the data sheets and all these different materials and visionminer.com slash materials to see all the materials we offer. They're all high temp performance thermoplastics designed for aerospace, medical, food industry, etc. Specifically, especially jigs, fixtures, and tooling. So if you like something in this video, let us know in the comments below. If you got a suggestion, let us know again. Hit that like and subscribe. Check out our other videos for the full comparisons of all these different materials that we've been doing. I'm gonna turn off the BOFA here. Great, great little unit also available on our site. And thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.